Hi, this is Robert Hunt, and this is my scientific presentation on what home remedy is the best for removing food colouring from skin. The reason that I chose to do this presentation is because outside of uni and in my spare time, I do a lot of baking and cooking, and I use a lot of the food dyes when I'm actually decorating the cakes. Because food colouring is a safe and generally available substance, it is used in other varieties of non-food applications such as cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, home craft projects and medical devices. At a very basic level all foods are either protein, carbohydrate or fat based. All these food products have functional groups that can hydrogen bond. The term hydrogen bond is when an interaction of a hydrogen atom is with an electronegative atom such as oxygen. This type of bonding can occur in organic molecules such as DNA, which is what your skin is made of. And that is why skin is able to bond with the food colouring because of the hydrogen and oxygen atoms. So yes, like I've said before, the aim of the ex experiment is to determine which combination of home remedy solutions removes either completely or reduces the largest amount of food colouring from human skin. The hypothesis that I was working with is that if the chemical reactions of the different solutions are changed, then the reduction of the food colouring of the skin should hopefully be increased completely. As you can see on the screen now is the list of materials used in this experiment. Most of these are just the different home remedies which were lemon juice and salt crystals, brown vinegar and bicarbonate, bicarbonate soda, toothpaste, household bleach diluted with water, so about 50-50%, so that the bleach doesn't burn the person. The methodology that I used was to basically prepare the skin sample by giving it a pre-wash and a dry, just to remove any dirt, oil or leftover contaminant contaminates. Using the eyedropper, put five drops of food colouring onto the skin sample and then spread using a cotton wool bud to cover a surface area of at least 20 centimetres squared. Allow this to soak into the skin for about five minutes just so that we allow for any residue moisture to be absorbed off the skin. The next step is to soak your a clean washcloth into whatever liquid material is your trialing and then using a counterclockwise motion swiping horizontally for 20 seconds to allow each solution the maximum time for it to take an effect. Once the 20 seconds are over remove any um, excess moisture by just using the back of a tea towel and place the plastic grid in the center of the skin sample and record how many squares have been completely um, cleaned of the food dye. If no squares have been completely cleaned, just make a note of how many shades lighter the skin sample has become and we put these results into the table provided. If you're dealing with any of the dry materials such as the salt crystal or bicarb soda, sprinkle them onto the surface area of the skin sample first before putting liquid material on top so that we don't get any of the reactions to occur before on the skin sample. For example, the vinegar and bicarb so um, have an oxidization process which is what is helping the skin sample basically leach the stain out of it. The independent variable that is in this investigation is the home remedies because they are the what is the thing that is constantly changing out of this entire experiment because I'm not using the same remedy over and over and over I'm changing different ones. The dependent variable is the total percentage of food colouring that is removed from the human skin and I'm working this out by using the 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter squared plastic grid so I can calculate how much has actually been removed from each home remedy sample. There are many controlled variables in this experiment. Basically the temperature of the room has to stay the same. The method of application, so how you're actually 
putting on and trying to remove the stain the force of which you're applying so when you're actually wiping down the skin how much force you put down um, the absorption t the absorption time so the five minutes after I put the food dyeing onto the skin that is the exhaustion time that has stayed the same for each one and um, the preparation of each skin sample between each trial so basically after each trial I gave I washed the skin sample down with water and liquid um, detergent so that I could get a basically clean slate for each example the use of the same colored food dye and the same brand because some brands might use a different additive or dye mechanism that will change it and also the different colors have different strengths like for example yellow seems to be a lot easier than red to actually remove in this instance I was using red and then also the time allowance for each methods removal attempt so basically that means the um, 20 swipes of the cloth that is the time allowance that stays the same to ensure an accurate validity of this assessment um, the, the data was actually collected over a three day period each trial was done on a single day so I did one lot one day then I did them all again the second day and then the third day um, they all had the exact same control variables because I did it at the same time of day and in the same spot with the same temperature and all that stuff so I've tried to make it as same conditions as possible um, the reliability of this investigation now there is a slight problem with this one because it is there is a slight issue with human judgment such as um, there can be a difference between observers like for example I might say one thing and you might think it's completely different that does come into play here because if there is no complete removal I was getting observ observation of how much was removed and converting that into a slight percentage so I'd actually had other people look as well to confirm my results so unfortunately there is a slight problem when that occurs but I got around that by using the plastic grid so I could actually have like an accurate result considering you really need an accurate methodology for determining your validity and your reliability of your project because if you've got a great project and you've done all good planning it doesn't really matter what your results get the following two slides just show the before the during and the after shot of each solution so you can just skip to those whenever you're ready I will pause the speaking for 20 seconds just to allow you time and then it will start off again on to the table of and graph of results page as you can see obviously it's a bar graph because we are dealing with one continuous variable or which is the total percentage of how much is removed that is the dependent and then you've got the independent variable which is the different methods of removal which is on the bottom axis in the graph I've just displayed the averages which was of course adding the three trials up together and then dividing by how many trials are actually done so that is what the graph is saying as you can see the control which was the water and liquid detergent was the best followed by the vinegar and bicarb soda with 90% out of the home remedies so that, that was the sc highest scoring while on the other hand the toothpaste was the worst scoring with an average of 45% now the toothpaste one didn't actually have any chemical reactions for it it was all to do with the abrasive um, rubbing technique because inside the toothpaste when you rub it on something it helps lift out stains like that because it actually scrubs your skin which is the same thing what the salt crystals were for the science behind why the vinegar and the bicarb was actually the best is because it has a process called oxidization which Proctor and Gamble stated as the process in which the chemical reaction cuts the stain molecule into small pieces which makes it allowed to be more easily removed by an acid or base 
which is the vinegar is the acid and the base is the bicarb. To conclude, this de um, investigation demonstrated that the control or mass produced method of removing stains from skin, which was the liquid detergent and water, is the most effective due to the fact that it has had prior research that's been done with it so that actually can that the companies can create a product that would actually work and sell which is the whole point out of all the home remedies the, the vinegar and the bicarb soda was the most effective as a, as a stain remover due to the chemical reaction that occurs with the oxidization which is of course is what helps remove the stains i was actually surprised the bleach wasn't as effective because i mean as most people know bleach is what they used to help remove blood stains which is a lot harder to get out than food stains are though i think it's probably because the bleach was watered down by 50 percent so that when actually putting on pure skin it wasn't actually going to burn the subject there is some errors that could have occurred again the issue of human judgment is probably one of the highest errors that could have actually happened in this experiment as well as improper application force etc etc I mean it was very similar but of course pressure can always be slightly different and that can always affect um, the two recommendations I would suggest if to us if someone else was to do this experiment to improve it would maybe to be change the color of the food dye and see if that actually makes a difference I use red because um, I find red to be one of the more difficult colors to get out so if someone was to do the same experiment but using a yellow food dye their results might be different than mine or they might be the same just depending on how tough the stain is to remove also maybe the absorption time um, I left them for five minutes each while normally if I'm actually doing cake and stuff I don't wash my hands until until I've done the end so that might actually be a couple of hours and that actually might be why it takes me a lot more t attempts to remove them off the skin because they've absorbed into a deeper level thank you for listening to this presentation and I actually hope you've actually learned something or find it rather interesting